Sometimes it seems like you're just drifting through life and never getting any closer to reaching your goals. It's not uncommon on the first day of the new year to start thinking about all the bad habits you want to break and all the good habits you want to make a point of incorporating into your daily routine. You might be aware of this pattern. Why not try to change your habits and live up to what you say you'll do for a change? How do you break away from bad habits and make the habits you want to have easier and automatic? A book written by James Clear called Atomic Habits will answer some or all these questions. We will be reviewing this book and hope this video inspires you. Would also highly recommend getting a copy of the book as it has the potential to have a massive influence in our lives. Tiny improvements, massive gains, 1% improvement. A minor adjustment in your everyday life can greatly influence where you're headed. Far too often, we convince ourselves that success is only possible through excessive action. Making one small change can make a world of difference. That's why we need to focus on doing the little things. It might take time before it's noticeable, and even then, people may not realize how much effort you've put into it for a long time. If you improve by 1% every day for a year, you'll be 37 times better. But if you get worse by 1% every day for a year, you'll be close to no improvement at all after 12 months. Compounding interest is one of the most powerful concepts in finance, and this same principle can be applied to habits. Imagine what your money could do if you could just get an extra 1% every day. It's not difficult to see how this can quickly snowball into a significant amount of savings. Habits can have several effects on you. They can be bad by creating stress or a negative self-talk that eventually lead to burning out. However, habits can also be good for acquiring knowledge, productivity skills, and building strong relationships. The progress bar. When we start a new endeavor, we generally expect progress to be linear. What you might not have noticed is that at the beginning of any project, there are small increments in our progress, even though they are challenging to see. Many people quit when they don't see immediate results to their efforts. The most powerful outcomes of any compounding process happen after a period of time, so we need to be patient and focus on what we can do in the meantime. Goals versus systems. A goal is the result that you want to accomplish. Systems help to manage the processes that lead to these results. It has long been established that there is no single recipe for success, but many people believe that setting specific goals can help you overcome obstacles and make incremental progress in virtually any field. But if you looked only at the benefits of your systems instead of your goals, would you still succeed in the long term? James contends you would. What is the point of having goals if we can't measure its outcomes? Both successful and unsuccessful people share the same goals, so the goal itself can't be what makes a winner. Once you've accomplished a goal and then it's gone, your life feels the same as it did before you achieved it. Even though you are making progress, there will be moments where you may feel like giving up and never finishing. Systems are important because they help to manage processes that lead to the results. But without a system, it can be difficult to identify problems and find solutions. Systems help to ensure that decisions are made quickly and efficiently. As James Clear clearly states, no pun intended, goals are good for setting a direction, but systems are best for making progress. The reason why you keep repeating the same bad habits for such a long time isn't because you don't want to change, but because of your ineffective system of change. Atomic habits are repetitive work that accumulates over time to make positive changes in your life. Big breakthroughs tend to get more attention than small improvements, but what really matters are the little daily decisions and actions we take that add up to make a difference. Just as atoms are the building blocks of molecules, atomic habits are the building blocks of remarkable results. Behavior change. Focusing too much on the outcomes can be counterproductive. Try to improve in subtle ways that should have a positive cumulative effect instead. A musician isn't just the person who can play an instrument. 
He and she is someone who has a profound understanding of music and sound. A runner isn't simply the person who can run a marathon, but someone with a love for running. Identifying a goal and making it part of your identity is all it takes to start enacting changes in your life. How habits are formed. The habit loop. A habit is something that you do often enough that you do it automatically. We want to create habits that solve problems in your life with a minimum amount of effort. A habit is formed and reinforced by means of a continuous feedback loop. Q plus craving plus response plus reward. The key to creating habits that stick is to create feedback loops that constantly improve. Q, phone notification. Craving, which app is it? Response, pick up the phone. Reward, you're now in the know. Q, bored. Craving, lust or irrational hope. Response, post on social media. Reward, instant gratification. Given enough time, rewards become associated with cues. For instance, constantly posting or scrolling through social media might be tied to your level of boredom. You could say that the more you repeat these habits, the stronger it becomes and the more automatic. Cues can be anything in life that may initiate your bad or good habit loops. Think of a time and location you usually engage in the habit or think of an event preceding it. So how can we harness the habit loop to work for us? Atomic Habits is a book that helps us understand the four laws to develop healthy habits. Law number one, make it obvious. Our habits can often be ingrained so deeply we don't even realize they're there. However, identifying the harmful habits first and addressing them can make the rest of change more manageable. A habit scorecard is a quick way to assess what's going on in your life and create new habits. What habits do you perform in the course of your day? Record them on a habit scorecard and try to remember when they happen and how often they happen. Your scorecard may look something like this. 6.30 a.m. Woken up by alarm. 6.35 a.m. Still laying in bed but on Instagram and Facebook. 7 o'clock a.m. Checked email. 7.30 a.m. Getting ready for gym. 8 o'clock a.m. In gym. 9 o'clock a.m. On way to work. 9.30 a.m. Work. 12.30 p.m. Lunch and more social media. 6 o'clock p.m. Back at home. 6.30 p.m. Social media. Split up your habits into three categories positive, negative, or neutral. The most common cues are time and location which will help you achieve your goals. An example will be to form a habit of going to the gym in your local area every morning at 7 o'clock a.m. or reading a book at 7 o'clock p.m. every night in a designated area. James Clear argues that motivation is highly overrated. He suggests a better strategy is to design your environment as we are more influenced by what's around us than our willpower or motivation. It can be tough to maintain positive habits, but it's essential. Try to make separate zones in your house for different activities using the mantra, one space, one use. If you're trying to eliminate a bad habit, it might be more helpful to use methods to cut off the source like removing access to temptation. This is one of the most practical ways and will make it easier for you to stick with your goals. To get focused, you might want to try removing sources of distraction. Put your phone in another room for a while or put all the snacks out of sight if you're trying to lose weight. Law number two, make it attractive. We are likely to repeat actions that we think will get us a reward. The more rewarding our actions become, the more likely we are to repeat them until they become habits. So the first step to forming good habits is to make them more attractive. For example, watering one tree every day would become watering one tree per week, then watering one tree per month. Dopamine. 
Dopamine is a neurotransmitter that controls the reward and pleasure centers of the brain. Its release motivates us to take actions needed to attain rewards. When dopamine levels are high, we're more likely to follow through with tasks that need to be done. Scientists can measure dopamine levels to figure out what motivates people and why our behavior changes under different conditions. Gambling addicts have a dopamine spike right before they place a bet, not after they win. James Clear. The craving is what makes us take the first step in a habit, so it's extremely important to make your habits attractive. We act because we've been conditioned to expect a rewarding experience. Here you can use a strategy known as temptation bundling. The temptation bundling process makes a habit more attractive by combining an action we need to do with one that we want to do. Group influence. We are continually wondering what will others think of me and altering our behavior based on the answer. James Clear. One way to encourage good habits is to find a group of people who habitually do them and get them involved in your life. Our society is mainly influenced by the people closest to us and the groups that we belong to. For example, if you're trying to go running daily, then make sure that you find a group of runners and run with them every day. Primal motivators are the source of cravings in your normal everyday life. You wouldn't say something to yourself, like I want to eat pizza because I need to consume this food to survive. Surface level cravings are merely manifestations of our deeper underlying motives, and these underlying motives guide our behavior. Your habits are modern day solutions to ancient desires, new versions of old vices. The underlying motives behind human behavior remain the same. James Clear. It can be hard to form new habits if they're unattractive. If you associate this habit with a positive experience, it'll start to seem more attractive and easier to pursue. The benefit of this approach is that you'll be able to succeed much faster with meeting objectives. Example fitness equals health and well-being and not fatigue cleaning. Saving money equates to future financial freedom and not sacrifice. Law number three, make it easy. How long does it take to form a new habit? When you repeatedly perform a behavior, your brain changes to become more efficient. Long ago, we knew that repetition was a powerful tool for forming habits, but few people realized how the process was happening. Neuroscientists have recently discovered that repeated acts activate certain neural circuits repeatedly in order to form habits. Studies show that framing habit formation in terms of time is not the best way to go, better try something else. For example, you can focus on the number of repetitions it takes to form a habit and then maintain it with ease. The easier a habit is for us to do, the more likely we are to do it, and the bigger the obstacle is the less friction there is between you and your desired outcome. You will find your life easier if you find ways to reduce friction rather than solve it. Take time to set up an appropriate environment for use, by automating or setting up your environment, you can drastically reduce the friction for any future action you might take. For example, set up your gym clothes, equipment and bag ready for the gym the night before if planning of going early in the morning. And again, this helps to reduce any friction. Another way of making it easy is to apply the two minute rule, which helps stop procrastination. First, find a simpler version of your desired habit and set it as your new two-minute baseline. It could be something like reading for two minutes. Frame this small habit as the new you and do it for two minutes every day. Gradually extend to more time with success. Once you've mastered the habit, it's time to take things a step further. Create barriers of friction between yourself and your bad habit so that it is as difficult as possible to indulge. If you want to watch less TV, unplug the TV after each use and put the remote in an inconvenient location. When you go shopping, leave your credit cards under the seat of the car if you have a bad habit of spontaneous spending. Do anything you can to make your bad habits less likely to occur. Law number four. Make it satisfying. 
This is the most important rule of behavior change. A feeling of pleasure is a message to the brain. This feels good, let's repeat this next time. When you experience someone doing something nice for you, your brain learns that it is worth remembering and replicating. What is immediately rewarded is repeated. What is immediately punished is avoided. James Clear The first three laws increase your chances of doing the habit this time. The last law increases your chances of repeating the habit next time. The mismatch between immediate and delayed returns. It's common to feel good about immediate results but feel bad about the long term. When we have practiced a bad habit, and the exact opposite happens when we have practiced good habits. For example, smoking feels good right now, but in the long term it is not satisfying. While exercise may be unpleasant while you're doing it, but afterwards you will feel satisfied. People tend to enjoy things that offer them an immediate payoff and those that do not. It is best to use a little short-term motivation to strengthen habits which offer long-term benefits and vice versa. Getting into a habit is about feeling successful, no matter how small your accomplishments. It means you're doing the work, and it pays off to feel good in small ways all the time. Despite your best efforts, life can be unpredictable, so it's important to develop a mindset and schedule that enables you to break out of the bad day cycle that you may find yourself in. Lost days hurt you more than successful days help you. James Clear Don't break the chain. Every time you mark a day off your calendar as a success from your given habit, you're creating an unbroken chain. It's important not to miss any days in a row, or the chain will be broken, and the bad habit starts again. A behavior is less likely to occur when it involves pain, but the pain doesn't have be to be physical. When you break a habit, you could simply come up with a rule to give a friend or partner some money for breaking that rule. That way, the pain of losing your money is more painful than the pain of breaking the habit. Conclusion The Power of Atomic Habits In conclusion, the book is a must-read for anyone who wants to make a change in their life. It offers practical and effective advice on how to create good habits and break bad ones. The principles hold true no matter what challenges exist in your life. Remember, make it obvious make it attractive, make it easy, and finally, make it satisfying. Leave a comment below if you believe I have missed anything from the book. All right, that's all, folks. Hope you gained something from this video, and if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Click on the like and subscribe buttons so we can continue making more of these videos. Once again, thank you for watching, and have a good day.